สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. A while ago, I made a video for Pat Ki Mao or Drunken Noodles, which is a very very popular Thai dish. Today, I'm making something similar. I'm making spaghetti Pat Ki Mao, which, as you might guess, is Pat Ki Mao that uses spaghetti noodles instead, and it's one of the first popular. Thai Western fusion dishes that are still popular today. So it's a little bit different technique from using the rice noodles traditional in the regular pad ki mao, but it's so so good. Let's get started. I want to talk a little bit about spaghetti. Now everyone's familiar with spaghetti, but there are actually two types of dry spaghetti out there, and one is. Shiny, and the other one is matte. So this one is matte, and it's got a bit of a rough surface. The ones that are have a rough surface allow the sauce to cling onto it better. The difference is in the way it's extruded from the machine, different material that's used in extruding the noodles. And so I prefer this to the shiny one. The shiny one because it's so smooth, sauce sort of slides off of it. So if you can pick the rough one. You want to make sure that when you cook your spaghetti, you add enough salt, because otherwise the noodles themselves are going to be bland. My rule of thumb is about one teaspoon of salt per one liter of water, which is more than you might expect, but trust me, it will make a big difference. As far as vegetables go, you have a lot of freedom, but I would recommend choosing something that is crunchy so that it contrasts well with the noodles. I'm using Chinese broccoli, thin slices on a bias, because it doesn't have a lot of time to cook in the pan, so you don't want big chunks. The top part, you can just sort of do just a rough chop. And a very popular vegetable for pad ki mao is baby corn. Now in Canada, I can only find canned baby corn, which isn't bad actually. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to make an herb paste that's the base of the stir fry. Spur chilies, which is our sort of big mild chilies. So if you can't find this, you can use any other type of mild chili pepper that you can find. And then to add spiciness, now pad ki mao is spicy. I mean. A non-spicy pad ki mao is almost an oxymoron. I'm adding a couple of Thai chilies, some garlic. Okay, so whole cloves of garlic. So I'm gonna throw all of that into my mortar here. And then, as an optional ingredient, I'm also going to add finger root. Now I've used this a couple of times in other episodes. It's a rhizome, so similar to ginger galangal. So it grows underground and it's really, really aromatic. If you cannot find this, don't worry about it. So this one comes in a brine. If you can get fresh, even better. So I'm just going to add a little bit. Pound this into a rough paste. As I always do, whenever I stir fry, I mix the sauce together ahead of time. It really helps you when you're cooking. So I've got some oyster sauce here, and I'm just doing one serving because most of the time this dish is made on the street and it is made to order. So I'm just sort of recreating that street food scene. I've got some soy sauce and fish sauce. And I'm also going to add some black soy sauce. Now, black soy sauce—I've used this before. The main purpose is to add color. Okay, it's very dark. It's got molasses in it, so a little salty, a little sweet, intense color with just a few drops. Okay, if you don't have this, you can add other kinds of dark soy sauce. Just be light-handed with it, just enough to get some dark color going on. The most important ingredient in pad ki mao is holy basil or bai ga pao. Looks like this. It's a bit hard to find. Now you notice the edges of the leaves are a little bit jagged, so that's how you would sort of distinguish it from the regular basil. It it, it is hard to find, even for me. If you don't have it. You can definitely use regular Italian basil, which I think is closer to holy basil than Thai basil. But if you want, if you love the smell of Thai basil, you can do that as well, and be very, very generous with it. Add a lot because it's going to wilt. So really, add more than you think you'll need. As far as protein goes, I am using ground beef for this one, but you can use whatever protein you want. If you are using ground beef, though, I like to cook it separately because I want to get rid of the extra fat that comes from the ground beef. Because I do find that if I don't, if I just cook everything together, it's a bit too greasy. But of course, if you're using super super lean ground beef, this may not be necessary. And that's it. Once it's done, just remove it from the pan. Oh my God! Look how many calories I'm saving. All right, I've got a fresh, clean pan. Just add a little bit of vegetable oil, and in goes the garlic, chili, and finger root mixture that we pounded. Okay, and now I'm gonna add my vegetables. 
and I'm going to add the beef back in. Add a little bit of the sauce that we made, just a splash, so that the vegetables and the beef have some seasoning on it. Distribute the love. Here's my little trick, is you want to make sure that you get to this point before your spaghetti is done because that way you can actually just put the spaghetti directly into this pan you don't have to drain it you don't have to you know wash your colander and it's just faster and easier and if your spaghetti is not ready like mine has just a couple minutes on it you can just turn this off and wait till it's ready see if i had two stoves right here this would be much easier put the spaghetti directly into the pan oh Taste the spaghetti first, make sure it is al dente and exactly where you need it to be. And don't worry about the extra pasta water that's going in here. The starch in it will actually help the sauce thicken and adhere to the noodles a little bit. See? So much easier. And now you don't have a large colander to wash, which is always the most annoying thing to wash. Okay, that's done. I'm going to turn this back on. Perfect. I'm going in with my sauce and just a little bit of sugar balance out the saltiness and at this point if you want to make this darker a couple of splashes of the dark soy sauce that looks done the sauce is all dry everything looks nice and mingled the star of the dish holy basil i'm going to turn this off though and just toss the holy basil in see that looks like a lot but trust me you'll appreciate it just let the residual heat of the noodles wilt the holy basil so we preserve as much of the freshness and fragrance as possible. I always love a little bit of white pepper and you can put this on the table so people can sprinkle it on their own plate if you want. And that's it, ready to plate. Ooh. So make a nice high mound. Now, as you can see, this is a dry dish. If you want to have a little bit of juice going on, you can certainly do that. Add a splash of stock or just water. One last detail, a little bit of chili vinegar or priknam som. And this is basically just white vinegar with any kind of chili. Let it sit in this vinegar mixture for you know 10-15 minutes before you use it. Let it give it some time to infuse and then drizzle the vinegar over the noodles just to give it that bright acidity to contrast the salt and the sweetness. I'm so excited. So good. This is one of those dishes that you know you're just gonna eat way too much of it if no one stops you. <laughs> it's chewy, the, the spaghetti is just the perfect chewy texture and it's got the right balance of salty, a little sweet and that brightness from the vinegar, it's all working so well. So that was super easy and it's also really flexible. You can change up the meat, the vegetables, so, so good. So give this a try. The recipe is on hotpiekitchen.com as per usual and send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal. Holy basil. Holy basil. Holy basil. Holy basil. Holy basil.